Hello, movie lovers. Welcome to Does It Hold Up? I'm Adam. This is a series where I pretend to travel back in time to correct the wrongdoings of Oscars from the past. The Academy doesn't always get it right. So I want to see who I would give the award to if I was running the Oscars at the time. To make it a little more simple, I don't just give it to any movie from that year. I do pick from the nominees that the Academy chose, but I just don't always think they got the winner right. So after almost a decade in the film industry, I started making fun videos like this, and that's why, although I'm not qualified because these are just opinion pieces, I think it's a lot of fun to go back and do this. So let's go ahead and go back all the way to 2002 to redo the 74th annual. Academy Awards. As always with me, the one who's going to be reading out who the nominees were and who the Oscars chose as their winner is the disembodied voice, Emily. Hey. Hey, Emily. How are you today? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing great. I am so ready to get into this. So bring it to me. What is our first category? We are starting, as always, with actor in a supporting role. The nominees were... Jim Broadbent for Iris, Ethan Hawke for Training Day, Ben Kingsley, Sexy Beast, Ian McKellen, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and John Voight for Ali. The winner that year, Jim Broadbent for Iris. Okay. Jim Broadbent in Iris was phenomenal. But there's only one role up here that set the tone for the entire year. And that's Ethan Hawke in Training Day. We're gonna get to his counterpart in this movie in just a little bit, but Ethan Hawke, to me, holds this entire movie together with this unsure rookie cop, rookie, rookie detective, who doesn't know whether or not to be on the good side of the law, the bad side of the law, run the fence, He's not sure what to do. And Hawk pulls this performance off perfectly. He's very confident in some scenes, less confident in others. You believe everything this man is doing. So as good as Jim Broadbent was, and trust me, he deserves this Oscar as well, I'm taking it away from him and I'm gonna give it to Ethan Hawk for Training Day. Moving on, we have actress in a supporting role. The nominees were Jennifer Connelly for A Beautiful Mind, Helen Mirren, Gosford's Park, Maggie Smith, Gosford's Park, Marissa Tomei in The Bedroom, and Kate Winslet from Iris. The winner, Jennifer Connelly for A Beautiful Mind. Before we get into this category, I just want to say my condolences to friends and family of Dame Maggie Smith, who we just lost within the last week. It's very sad. She's been in a ton of good movies fell in love with her many years ago. She's amazing in Gosford Park, but I'm, I'm not giving her the award. I just kind of wanted to have a moment for her. I think the Academy got this one 100%, right? Jennifer Connelly is brilliant in A Beautiful Mind. She's actually one of those actresses that you think should have had maybe one or two more Oscars in her career than she has. So I can't take this one away because she deserves it pretty much every time she's been nominated. And it's no different here. A Beautiful Mind is a beautiful movie, and I think she's one of the standout parts of it. So good job, Academy. You got this one right. I'm keeping it with Jennifer Connelly. Then we have actor in a leading role. The nominees were Russell Crowe, A Beautiful Mind, Sean Penn, I Am Sam, Will Smith, Ali, Denzel Washington, Training Day, and Tom Wilkinson for In the Bedroom. The winner, Denzel Washington for Training Day. There's not a lot to say here. Russell Crowe is brilliant in A Beautiful Mind. Sean Penn, I'm not the biggest fan of Sean Penn, but I can't deny he's got some amazing talent and he's good in this movie. Will Smith thought this was gonna be his Oscar movie. He was great as the legendary boxer, but the performance just wasn't all there. Tom Wilkinson in the bedroom is kind of forgettable. He's good, but it's like, do you really remember him all that much? This is 100% Denzel's Oscar. 
He came into this movie giving 150% to this role because, well, first of all, he's Denzel. And second of all, he knew this was his opportunity to snag an Oscar. And he did it, and I agree. So we're going to go ahead and keep it with Denzel Washington for Training Day. Actress in a leading role. The nominees were Halle Berry for Monsters Ball, Judi Dench, Iris, Nicole Kidman for Moulin Rouge, Sissy Spacek for In the Bedroom, and Renee Zellweger for Bridget Jones's Diary. The winner, Halle Berry for Monsters Ball. Academy. Congratulations. You did it yet again. You gave it to the correct performance. Everybody else in this category is absolutely phenomenal. I love Nicole Kidman. I'm a huge fan of hers. Moulin Rouge works off the back of her performance. Sissy Spacek is always good. Renee Zellweger had a breakout role in Bridget Jones's Diary. She blew the walls off of that performance. But at the end of the day, Halle Berry was amazing in Monsters Ball. It is not only the best female performance of the year, but it also just might be the best performance of the year. If I had to pick which performance was better, Denzel's or Halle Berry's, I think I'm going Halle Berry in Monsters Ball. And that means the Academy got it right. They're off to a great start, off to a really good start. I'm keeping it with Halle Berry for Monsters Ball. Moving on to Writing Adapted, the nominees were A Beautiful Mind, Ghost World, In the Bedroom, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and Shrek. The winner, A Beautiful Mind. A Beautiful Mind, as I said earlier, is a beautiful movie. But I'm going to take the Academy Award away from it. It is gorgeously written. Dialogue is superb, pacing is fantastic, storytelling is amazing. But at the end of the day, there's a very unique movie here that I think gets underseen a lot and under-talked about, and I think it's a little undervalued, and that's Ghost World. This is a great movie with some great witty dialogue that just explodes off the screen. It really lets you into the mind of these characters, and the performances really make this script come to life, which shows you exactly how good it really is. It's not nominated anywhere else, except for here. And I think there's a really big reason for that, because even the Academy knew how good this script was. So I'm taking it away from A Beautiful Mind, and I'm giving it right to Ghost World. Writing original, we have Amelie. Gosford's Park, Memento, Monster's Ball, and the Royal Tenenbaums. The winner, Gosford Park. This might be the hardest category of the ones that we do here on the channel. Amelie is beautiful. Very well written. Gosford Park, obviously the winner that they chose, extremely well written. Memento has this weird charm to it in the way it was written. Monster's Ball, amazing. But the one I'm gonna give the win to here is the Royal Tenenbaums. Wes Anderson wrote a beautifully poignant script that has a lot of heart behind it. It has a lot of care for the characters and it tells a really interesting story in a really unique way. He made these somewhat unlikable characters rather likable between because of their interactions, because of the way that they speak to each other, the way that they do things. And because of this script, this movie comes together. In lesser hands, this is a complete disaster of a movie that doesn't really make any sense, no matter how good the performances are. So I'm taking it away from Gosford Park, and I'm giving it to Wes Anderson and Owen Wilson, who was a surprise co-writer on this movie, and I'm giving it to The Royal Tenenbaums. Next up, we have a new award to our show, and that is because it's the first year this award was ever given out, and that is Best Animated Feature. The nominees were Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, Monsters, Inc., and Shrek. The winner, Shrek. As Emily just said, this is the first year ever for Best Animated Feature. That's why there's only three nominees, even though there were other great movies that also came out this year, but we'll go off of just these three. Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius is a really fun movie based off a Nickelodeon show. It was surprising that it got a nomination. 
Really, it came down to the other two movies, Monsters, Inc. versus Shrek. And I know everybody absolutely adores Shrek. But is it really all that good? I don't think so. I'm not a Shrek fan. I don't think it's really all that funny. I don't think the performances are all that great. And the story is kind of a little messy and a little convoluted for especially a kid's movie. I don't think it deserved to win, and I think it set the Academy on a bad path of picking more mainstream or more in-the-moment movies in this category rather than the ones that should have won. So I'm taking it away from Shrek. I'm not giving it to Jimmy Neutron. I'm giving it to Monsters, Inc. Disney Pixar pulled off a masterpiece with Monsters, Inc. This movie has a beautiful story with amazing characters and the animation is absolutely gorgeous. This is everything you could want from an animated film and it didn't have to rely on making fun of the competition or fart jokes or low-hanging fruit. It's just a beautifully told story with some great visuals. So I'm taking it away from Shrek and I'm giving it to the rightful winner that it should have actually gotten, Monsters, Inc. Now on to Best Directing. The nominees were Robert Altman for Gosford Park, Ron Howard, A Beautiful Mind, Peter Jackson, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, David Lynch, Mulholland Drive, and Ridley Scott for Black Hawk Down. The winner was Ron Howard, A Beautiful Mind. One of these things is not like the others. I love me some Ridley Scott, but it's really interesting to see Black Hawk Down in this category being best directing. Like, I'm pretty sure he slept through part of making this movie, but that's besides the point, side tangent. Ron Howard made a beautiful movie. I've already said this a couple times on the show. Beautiful Mind is amazing. Everything about it, top to bottom, is just fantastic. But at the end of the day, I don't really feel like the directing behind this movie is what brought it to life. It's more about the actors in the movie and even the script. I think Ron Howard just got lucky and fell into this movie. On the other hand, the movie that I'm going to give it to, and it's not going to be Peter Jackson, because we'll deal with that in a couple of years, but I'm going to give it to Mulholland Drive. David Lynch made a masterpiece of a movie. This probably isn't the best David Lynch movie, which says a lot that I'm still going to give it this award. David Lynch is a brilliant director that brought together a script that is a little muddled. It's a little messy. He's working with actors and actresses that nobody would ever say are probably the best of all time. And somehow he took all of these mediocre to good elements and he created a masterpiece of a movie. And that's really just down to him as director. So I'm taking it away from Ron Howard and I'm handing it over to David Lynch for Mulholland Drive. And the final award of the evening is Best Picture. The nominees were A Beautiful Mind, Gosford Park, In the Bedroom, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, and Moulin Rouge. The winner, A Beautiful Mind. All great picks here. All of them fantastic movies in their own right. Moulin Rouge, classic. Lord of the Rings probably could have won every award every year that one of these movies was nominated, but it makes sense why it doesn't always win. In the Bedroom is really good. Kind of forgettable, but really good. Gosford Park, amazing. But the Academy also chose the rightful winner in this one. It's a beautiful mind. Everything about this movie just came together so perfectly to create this very poignant, very poetic film with some great performances. The fact that Russell Crowe would have won in pretty much any other year if he wasn't up against Denzel Washington says everything. Jennifer Connelly won. Ron Howard won. The script won. Everything won in real life. Although I made a few changes here on the show because I thought maybe other pieces were a little bit better, this was the best put together film of the year. So good job, Academy. I think you got four right this year out of these categories because I agree with you. It's a beautiful mind for best picture. All right, let me know in the comments below what you think about all of the decisions that I made. Do you agree with my changes? Would you have given it to something else? I'd love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below. 
And if you haven't already, go back and watch the other episodes. We've already covered the year 2000 and the year 2001. We're going to continue this here every week on the channel. So make sure you like, share, subscribe so you never miss a single video. We'll be back again next week with another Oscars redo. We also do a box office roundup here every Tuesday. So come check that out. That's a good time, especially if you're into numbers and you kind of want to see how well movies are playing in theaters. We also do daily fun facts. So... If you're into behind the scenes stuff about movies, that's a good time as well. Click the video on the screen to check out another one of our videos. Until I see you next time, just remember to be good to yourself, be kind to others, and keep watching movies.